Welcome to a word in season. Have you been told, like me, if you fail to plan, you plan to fail? How society holds it in high regard that we manage our time, have a schedule and stick to the to-do list in prioritized order. Too often, we don't leave room for interruptions and unplanned acts of goodness. Like a couple of Sundays ago on our way to church, we drove past a bloke whose car is broken down next to the road. Do we continue driving and be on time for the MPK team meeting and set up? Or do we stop and help first? We understand from Galatians 5 verse 16 to 24 that when we allow the Holy Spirit to direct our lives, it will shape how we think, speak and act in the process of bearing the fruit of the Spirit. Goodness is kind of tucked away in the middle of the list of nine, almost forgotten as it follows some big ones like love, joy, peace, patience and kindness. Usually by the time we get to goodness, we just try to concentrate so hard to remember the last few that we kind of skip over it and not really think what it means and implies. Yet in Hebrews 13 verse 16 we read, And do not forget to do good and to share with others, for with such sacrifices God is pleased. And Jesus repeatedly and willingly accepted interruptions for the sake of others, often pausing his chats with his disciples and redirecting on his way to the temple to teach and heal others. This was so important to him that he affirmed it with a very well-known parable in Luke 10 of the Samaritan who demonstrated goodness when others didn't. As you know, this parable is rich in meaning from many angles. But for today, let's briefly focus on the actions of the Good Samaritan. Two religious leaders traveling the same direction not only didn't stop, but took a wide berth around the fellow, avoiding him entirely. But not the Samaritan, himself despised by the Jews for his nationality. We read in verses 33 to 35, But a Samaritan, as he journeyed, came to where he was, and when he saw him, he had compassion. He went to him and bound up his wounds, pouring on oil and wine. Then he set him on his own animal and brought him to an inn and took care of him. And the next day he took out two denarii and gave them to the innkeeper, saying, Take care of him, and whatever more you spend, I will repay you when I come back. What can we learn about the fruit of goodness from this Samaritan traveler? Firstly, goodness involves compassion. When we allow the Holy Spirit to flow through us, we will have compassion on people in need. Will we listen to a co-worker who needs to bend our ear? Will we stop to help a family stranded on the side of the road? Or when will we spend time with a child who needs some extra attention? Secondly, goodness involves extravagant giving. Did you see it? The Samaritan poured oil and wine on his victim's wounds, an unexpected use of his costly supplies. On top of that, he gave the innkeeper two denarii, which are two days of wages, to use for the care of the man and told the innkeeper he would reimburse any extra expenses. Did you notice he didn't put a limit on what the innkeeper might spend? Sometimes extravagant giving means doing something messier and harder than giving a credit card number for a good cause. This good-hearted Samaritan hoisted the bloody beaten man up onto his own animal, not worrying about the filth he may need to clean later. I try to picture lugging a naked beaten up person into my car to transport them to the hospital. That puts this graceful action of the Samaritan into perspective. And thirdly, goodness involves investment of time. Our good Samaritan interrupted his journey and took care of the man at the inn overnight. Surely he had obligations to fulfill and people waiting at the end of his trip. Yet he tended to the man overnight, perhaps to make sure the man was stable before he continued on his journey. Not only that, he even promised to return and settle the account with the innkeeper on his way back. 
Time. We hold the commodity so closely that we have lost how, how precious the generous expenditure of it is. When faced with seemingly time-wasting situations, we so easily become frustrated or cross. But Jesus instead set his face toward the cross and all that it would mean for you and me. With incomparable goodness, Jesus faced his coming crucifixion with us in mind. This is ultimate Holy Spirit goodness. Thinking of others above oneself, even to the point of death. Yes, the fruit of the Spirit of goodness involves active benevolence, a disposition to do all the good we can, and selflessly acting on behalf of others. My prayer is, as we enter the Christmas season, that we will follow Jesus' teaching and His perfect example of ultimate goodness and let it flow through us by the power of the Spirit. Let our days be interrupted. Let us go the extra mile for someone we don't know well. Let's look out for another person over and above ourselves or our schedule or to-do list. Yes, next time on the way to church, I will not even think twice and stop next to the road to help first.